Бой начинается! Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today we have another live reaction replay. This time with what I would say is arguably one of the best, if not the best, tier 8 premium battleship. The Soviet battleship Lenin. So, Lenin is a, um, a Nelson that pretty much, well, had a little bit too much vodka one night and then got to hang out with the Russian ambassador. And, well, now you have this thing here. It has nine 16-inch guns with Soviet AP. She's actually one of the squishier Soviet battleships because her Citadel is very much high and dry. Uh, but from a balance side of things, she's very difficult to kill. Now, she does have the, of course, normal Soviet runabout of consumables. You get the quick action damage con and the heals, the same layout that, the, well, same type that you get with the Soviet battleships. And today, this linen is being driven by Cutlass here. Now, Cutlass is in a double CV game. He is top tier, so he's got that going for him. And let me just say that you guys are going to want to stick around for this one. I have an idea of what happens, I don't know exactly how it happens, but just from the little idea that I got with the information I received with this uh, replay, you're going to want to see it. Trust me. So, uh, we are in, what is this? Haven, yeah, that's the name of this map. We are in Domination on Haven. Ooh, Mahan is getting up a little bit. So, it looks like you've got... Lenin, the Harlem, New Mexico, the Fubuki, and a Mahan, a Kansas, a Cochrane, and a McKinzen heading out here to the eastern side of the map. What normally happens here on Haven is that both teams stack up to a certain point on these flanks. You've got typically that island, two islands ahead of Cutlass here, that the northern spawn will stack up on, and they'll sit there for a bit, then the uh, western spawn they'll just kind of stack up on that island where you see that Veneto at right now, and then we'll have a little bit of peekaboo, and, well, eventually one side manages to sink enough ships to win, and then the remaining ships go into the B and C caps and kind of duke it out. Well, Mahan is um, getting awfully close to Cutlass's linen here. He's going broadside. He lets the 16-inch shells rip, and look how accurate those guns are for tier 8. Boom! Almost 4k off the bat. Easy three defended ribbons there. And then his sectors start popping off on him too. Uh, he did include his commander build, so I'm not exactly sure what he's got on his linen. But 7.2 seems a little far for the linen se secondaries. That's interesting. Cutlass, if you're in the comments, let us know what go what's going on with your commander build, my guy. Mahan is trying to escape... Cutlass predicts how hard he's going to turn. Looks like he called it pretty good, and there we go. First blood, and Cutlass's first kill of the match. That's good, getting those DDs out. That's key for, well, blinding your enemy team. You definitely want to make sure that you do that. And now look, the Fabuki is free to just mosey on into the cap and secure the cap for his team. But I like this guy. He's going after the DDs. This dude knows what's up. I like that. So many players just let these DDs go for whatever reasons, but they're so important to take these guys out. That removes the spotting and that removes the torpedo, um, torpedo, oh god, what's, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? The torpedo picket or the torpedo, torpedo screen for the enemy battleships. Now the McKinson did pick up the Veneto, so it looks like they're trading about one to one right now. Grand is a DD down, which is a battleship. Battleships are important too, don't get me wrong, but DDs in my opinion are the most important class in the game and you want to do everything that you can to make sure yours has the support that they need. Oh, oh, are these guys just going to sell out in front of them? So the Cochran here and he's, he's been fired, he's spotted. They know that he's here. So we're about to see just how uh, durable these new Pan American cruisers are. So, I mean, shoot from this range, shoot with Lennon's accuracy, the, he might get a, get a death strike here. Let's see what happens here, shall we, class? Alright, Cochran from 7 kilometers leads to get a little bit too much lead, and yeah, because that gets a bunch of overpins, a little bit further back, he probably would have citadel the crap out of the Cochran here. Uh, I, I believe the Harlem just did there. That's okay, the guns reload. You've noticed with the Lennon's turret orientation too, unlike the 
Izumo that we're talking about yesterday, since she has all three turrets facing forward, look, he's already got all nine guns back on target. Super easy swipe for him. Looks like the McKinsey and the Kansas are paying attention and not doing what this Cochran. Oh, Cochran's angling. It should give that AP enough to bite into. And no, Rick. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> I was about to say, oh, okay, maybe they are a little bit tougher. There we go. A uh, couple of shells bite, Citadel's him for his second kill of the match. And then the, oh, no, are they doing the one at a time thing? Okay, the McKinson, what, it, what, what is the play here, Mr. McKinson? Um, he's looking behind him for some, oh, the Fabuki pushed up. Brilliant play by the Fabuki. So these guys have to push up now or eat the Fabuki's torps. Oh, God, we haven't seen this type of teamwork since 2000 and 2018. There we go, his third kill of the match. You guys might see where this is going at this point. All right, so he finished off the McKinsey there for kill number three. Kansas is now running. Well, as fast as a Kansas is uh, is uh, able to run at the, the hot jog of 20 knots. But look at this. Despite the enemy team just feeding him kills, they're still managing to knock out his ships just as fast. So we got a DD down and two BBs down. Oh, no. The, okay, the hero Fabuki is still alive. So basically what happened is the western flank, the enemy team, has managed to, well, do what the eastern flank here on the friendly team has done to Cutlass's team. So well, Cutlass's team has won the eastern flank. The enemies have won the western flank. That appears to be since they kind of went on a symmetrical spread. Yeah, that's what's going on. So, enemy team's down a cruiser, a DD, and a battleship. Friendly team's down a DD and two battleships. And Cutlass has managed to Austin Powers his linen here. Um, I've done this several times with, with many a boat in the past six, seven years that I've been playing this game. So, I feel your pain there. Kansas is a chunky target. He might actually be able to chunk the Kansas here, I think. If he can get most of those. Can he? Can he? Can he? Yeah, there we go. 9k to the Kansas. Although I suspect someone's probably going to pick that up before his shells can get... Yeah, there we go. So the New Mexico has managed to get that kill. Now, do keep in mind, of the four kills right now, three of them have been Cutlasses. Yeah, keep that in mind as we as we continue on from here, class. Alright, so looks like we've got... Well, looks like we're going to play, play a little ring around the rosy here. It looks like the entire enemy team is moving up, except for that one implacable in the back. Also looks like the entire friendly team is moving up, except their second carrier is going with them. Oh, but the Vastaras is about to meet the Fabuki for a, for a little duke here, and I would suspect the Vastaras is going to win since it is more of a gunboat and the Fabuki is more of a dedicated torpedo boat. And Cutlass, instead of, you know, going forward, he's turning around. He's turning around to meet the enemy head on. So let's see how this goes out for him. Uh, the Vastaras is disengaging from the Fabuki, it looks like. Um, which is very weird, I suspect. He would just want to, want to go in and get him. Although, I guess the Harlem pushing up is probably deterring the Vastaras from uh, just yellowing at the Fabuki. Ooh, the Implacable got a good run off on the Fabuki there. Just removed, I think, about 1,200, 1,500 damage from uh, HP from the uh, friendly Fabuki. Alright, Massachusetts McKinson. Massachusetts strong BB. Probably one of the other best tier 8 BBs. Uh, can definitely give a linen a run for its money. Okay, but he's opening up on said Massachusetts. Ryujo is coming in to drop the Furious. He's trying to CV snipe his competition here. Oh, Hipper gets uh, quite a good shot out on the Fabuki. And unfortunately for Cutlass's team, sinks him. So we are 4 4, ladies and gents. We. Look, the, the points are even close. Oh my god, this is. Oh no. Oh, no. That's not good. As I was saying, this looks like a close game. The friendly team loses their fury, so now they are down a CV and a double CV game. There's a lot of spotting, a lot less damage doing for the friendly side of things. So Cutlass finally gets his adrenaline rush going. Got a broadside uh, Ignatius there. Ign Ignis, whatever. Amagi. Warhammer Amagi right there, I believe. Uh, chunks him pretty good. He's up to 52k. Got a broadside hipper for 15 kilometers, although the Linus dispersion at that range is, eh, granted, you don't need a lot to connect with the Linus shells, but, yeah. That's when the dispersion starts to get a little, mm, It is still a tier 8 battleship. Oh, he goes undetected. The McKinson, the Mass, and the, what was that, the Derotor are taking the A-cap. Ooh, Ignatius. Oh, this looks good. This looks good. This looks good. Come on. Oh, 
Looks like the shells cooperated with him. And, 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 and. Oh, nice, nice chunk there. Almost a, a flat 10k there to the Ignis. There's the Yamagi, right? Yeah, that's the Yamagi. Okay, so the Igni the Ig the the Amagi, the Warhammer Amagi, is now going into the B cap, probably to lick his his wounds. I would imagine Nagato, Mass Hipper. He's got a lot here, and uh, he does have them in a bit of a of a crossfire here because they have to go bow into his team. And he's managing to scoot down here to where he can get at their juicy sides. So they have to choose. Okay, do we angle to this one ship, or do we angle to the New Mexico, the uh, Alabama, and the shores up here? This is an ideal situation that you want to be in. You want to get the, the flat broadsides of the enemy ships so you can chunk the living crap out of them. Okay, the Amagi is just sailing out. The Ryujo, though... Ooh, 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 ooh. That's a very squishy target. The Cutlass is considering whether or not he wants to go for it. It's worth noting too, that Lin doesn't have that, that great of AA. He's shot down 13 planes already. At least from my experience, doesn't even have that great of AA. Alright, now the team, the enemy team is starting to focus him. Okay, McKinzen, fairly broadside battle cruiser, not the best armor ever. Nice roll, 13,000, almost 14,000 damage there. Up oh, here comes the the uh, Warhammer Amagi is scooting up. Ah, he he's he's, he's trying to catch that Amagi because he is low, and obviously you want to finish off those low HP ships. Uh, friendly team is starting to push up from the north again, still giving the enemy team something to think about, so they can't just. Give all their attention to Cutlass here, although they are giving him a lot of their attention at the moment. But you see the New Mexico and the Alabama pushing up now, starting to give that enemy team something to worry about. And there goes the New Mexico. Nagato got the New Mexico. Oh, man. Half of Cutlass's team's already dead. And the uh, enemy team's only lost four ships so far. Okay, so let's see. Uh, decent hit there on the mass. That was 5k there. Ooh, looks like someone set it out of the Nagato. Uh, Cutlass is backing up into cover. Smart move. Because as tough as this ship is... Cannot, obviously, survive being focused down by four ships plus two CVs. God, mascot her sister there with the Alabama sibling violence. It, wow, Cutlass's team's down to five ships now, and they are down by almost 400 points. Can he get the Hail Mary here? No, he's going to go behind the, uh, the, uh, Mongo's going to go behind the island. All right, flooding, fire, steering gear's knocked out. About to say, even I would use my damage kind of there at that point, my guy. All right, uh, come on. Can you get the Hail Mary? Because if he gets that guy off of his side, that's a bunch of 16-inch guns that he doesn't have to worry about. Like I said, the linen side is very squishy, so you don't want that thing having access to your broadside. And nice! Nice! Citadel's him for his fourth kill. Takes out the Amagi. All right, McKinnon's starting to push up. Uh, Nagato's pushing up, too. Looks like these three are going to push him at this point all at once. He's got, literally got his back to a wall at this point. So let's see how this goes. Gets his priority A set. He's sh shot down 19 planes so far. Hello, Mr. McKinson. How are you? McKinson's coming around. Drops some AP into his broadside. Bounces. Oh! Gets him down to 200 HP with a second. Oh, come on. Get a close quarters. Get a close quarters. Oh, it's going to burn out. He has Kraken Unleashed, ladies and gentlemen. But guess what? He is not done yet. But wait. There is, in fact, more. There is a lot more. All right. Nagato in the mass. Oh, God. They took out his shores, too. As he kit. As he picks up a kill, someone on his team dies, it seems. Nagato, ooh, lots of nice broadside. The friendly CV's dropping in with F-15s, apparently. Force him to go bow into the planes, and come on, come on. Nice! Confederate high caliber, three Citadels to the Nagato. Oh, come on, get a close quarters. I want him to get a close quarters with a Lennon. Oh, that's going to take him out. Another Citadel! That is his sixth kill, ladies and gentlemen. But wait, there are still enemy ships left alive to add to his tab. The Mass is pushing him now, too. Now, this is where Mass excels at. Close and brawling. She's got the improved heal, the secondaries, the American 16-inch shells. None of those American 16-inch guns. She is quite the powerhouse at close range. Ah, broadside hipper, 10 kilometers away. Let's it rip on the hipper. Uh, the Mass is still coming in. So he's trying to avoid ramming. And God, almost gets the hipper down there. He's down to 5k. Ooh, lovely, lovely, lovely. Bounces the Mass shells. Bounces the Hipper AP. Hipper's probably swapping to HE there. Ryujo coming in. It's like Mass is trying to go for the ram. Or he's trying to angle him to where he just scoots by. Two fires on him from the planes. And let's see. Can he get his guns around in time? Linden does have a pretty quick turret traverse. No, he cannot. So he dodges the Mass the mass drive-by and the mass ram. That was very spooky there. I would have been very concerned. Ah, but Mass has his flat stern. And Linden does have a stern that can be just... You know, going right through because it's perfectly fat, like a transom stern. 
He looks like he's trying to get those, yep, pre-position his turrets, get him in target, get, get him on target. He's turning, taking the risk, and oh, perfectly bounces the mass shells. Man knows how to angle his linen. And let's see, he's trying to pick the right spot. That looks like the right spot. That was the right spot for kill number seven. 208,000 damage. And look, the hipper has returned. They didn't get to finish off over. And keep in mind, his team is still losing. He has seven kills. And his team is still losing at this point with four minutes left on the clock. They got to get the, the rest of these ships down. The Shorn Horse misses the hipper from, what, four kilometers away? Okay. Broadside hipper, six kilometers. He's having to, again, angle into the Shorn Horse. And Cutlass does have his broadside here. There he goes. Shells out. That should be a dead hipper for kill number eight, ladies and gentlemen. 212,000 damage. Okay, his team is winning, and now they're losing again! The man has eight kills, and his team is still going to lose this match. He has to put in more work. Okay, so, um, god, alright. Implacable is probably in, in, in J10, like, like, the CVs normally are. Okay, Ryujo's up here. He's got three minutes to kill the Ryujo, and his team might be winning at that point. Okay. Alright, so he's got to find the Ryujo. The Vastaris is probably going to... If I had to guess, that, that, that that's a dead Parzival down there. Or the Shronos might be dead, because I saw the Shronos eat, eat, eat what I think was Vastaris torpedoes earlier. Okay. Um, God. Alright. So, this Ryujo. He's down to 19k. He's got one more heal left. Two more damage cons, because he has... A limited number of damage. There's the Vosterus. Okay, that's the dead Shronos, actually. Alright, so that, that Shronos is probably dead, if I had to guess. Mangus A, defense expert in a friggin' linen, of all things. Okay, yep, there goes the Shronos. His team is still 200 points down, and the dude's got 8 kills at this point. Uh, he's got to make some magic. Oh, the Implacable's up here! I didn't even notice that! Okay, okay, okay. The Fox has entered the hen house, ladies and gentlemen, but the Fox ha doesn't have any good AA guns. All right, let's see. Five kilometers away, Soviet dispersion through the nose, Ryujo. 21k. That is a Citadel plus a lot of good. Well, a Citadel plus a good pin, I should say. Then some uh, some over pins there. His team's still down 129 points. There's no cap advantage in one at this point. Both teams are earning points at the same rate. Double fire from the CVs. He has one damage con, one heal left. Secondary is opening up on the Ryujo. Okay, so let's see. That he should finish off this Ryujo here. Okay, okay, come on, come on, do it, do it, do it, do it. There it goes. His team is still- The man has nine kills and his team is still losing! <laughs> what is this? He launched his fighter in some vain- Some, some, some vain attempt to actually do something against CV planes in a- In a land. Granted, the dude does have a defense expert among pretty much every other team you can get in battle right now. Alright, one of the nose pops his last hill. He's done with hills after this. Alright, there's an implacable, and there is a Vastaros that has popped up now, too. Alright. So keep in mind, even if he kills this implacable, if this Vastaros gets him, that these teams losing again. So he gets a citadel there, removes half of the implacable's AP, uh, HE, HE, HP. One, two, three torpedoes. His teammate shouting at him to zigzag. The man is zigging as much as he can zag. In a linen. More implacable planes coming in. Vastaros is opening up on him. Alright, come on. Send this implacable to the Shadow Realm, sir. And. Alright, his team is finally winning after the man has 10 kills. But if this Vastaros sinks him, then his team's gonna lose. So now he's gotta kill this Vastaros before he kills him. Oh my god, with one minute left and 10 kills on the board, he has to deal with this Vastaros. Okay, let's see. He still has AP loaded because, you know, that's the, 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 the munition that men choose. Not swapping to HE. Chunks of Vosterus for how much? You're 5,000. Okay, he's at 10k HP. The Vosterus is probably dumping torpedoes. He's trying to go dark now. The Parzival is keeping him spotted, thank the lord. Okay. So, Vosterus is, for some reason, shooting his upper belt armor instead of his superstructure. Okay, there we go. He's just trying to get him to turn for the torpedoes. And... He's won 4,000, uses his, his last damage counter. I think he has one more after this one, maybe. Secondaries knock out the engine on the Vosteros. Parzival coming in with AP rockets. Those don't have the firing delay, so those are much easier to hit DDs with. Oh, gets him down the... Oh, yes! Secondary! Yes! Close quarters expert! 11 kills! Oh, my God! <laughs> he did. He finally got... Did he get every achievement? 
because that should have been Dreadnought. Ah, uh, did he get fireproof? No. Okay, so for that absolutely insane round, the Cutlass here, dude, you paid for the ship. You used the whole ship. That's the the dude's the, the <laughs> this dude's belief. So he got AA expert, Dev Strike, Confederate, Close Quarters expert, Dreadnought, Kraken, First Blood. And high caliber. God. 11 kills. The man really said, Nod team, I got you. And killed pretty much the entire enemy team. That is insane. This was a 4,100 base XP game, fellas. He had 68 planes shot down, too, on top of that. Um, so he, he was running, uh, I believe, green credit boosters. So he got he had a 3 million... No, sorry, he had blue... Uh, blue credit cre uh, credit booster. So he had a three million credit game there, dude. Dude made a, a tiny profit off of that with that being a premium ship, and all. Obviously number one on the team, and good God, Cutlass, that was absolutely insane. That's probably one of the craziest craziest matches I've ever seen uh, come across my my inbox there. In uh, well, actually, it came across Discord in my DM. So yes, Cutlass. Hats off to you. You earned every single one of those 3 million credits. Um, good God. I, I, I don't know what to say. I'm speechless. I, I am speechless at the end of this replay. So, bravo, Cutlass. I am very glad that you weren't playing against me that match. Because that, that would be terrifying. And I'm going to be very scared running into you from here on out, sir. <laughs> so, guys, let me know what you guys think about Cutlass's game in the comments down below with absolutely one of the best ships at tier 8 and yes the ship is good but guys like it, it, it's the ship itself didn't do this you gotta have a competent captain behind it and cutlass is apparently more than a competent com uh, captain sailing his linen so hope you guys enjoyed have a wonderful wednesday if you guys did enjoy make sure to drop a like uh, leave a comment subscribe to the channel if you have a crazy game like this you can send it to uh, the email you find in the description down below or if you are in the channel's discord you can also just shoot me it in a dm hope you guys enjoyed have a wonderful wednesday have a wonderful rest of your week hope to catch you guys in the next one